cut. Here today, I wanted to uh, do a video. We uh, took a pretty big hike. We came up. It's nice up here. I thought I'll I'll do a video here on some loose lead training and some off leash work. Normally, I'm running off leash, but today I want to show a little bit about my theory on uh, working with a leash. Lots of times, I don't think people set the pup up just right. And uh, they may start out with, with the wrong intentions. I always start to pup out off leash and then go to leash work later. So all of our pups that we raise, and I raise dogs, I sell these dogs, I start them out off leash. I think you have better results that way. Now, I believe until a pup is pretty well trained, you have to signal the dog that it's time to work and primarily I use a halter to do that. It's the halter that it's like a switch for the dog. Once the halter goes on it knows it's there to work. It's not playtime. And so I use the halter to signal that it's work time. Now the dog will supposedly pay attention better, which it does if you work it correctly. Now, what I also believe is that a lot of people set the dog up for failure by hooking the leash on and immediately start going for a walk. And if you're walking on a trail, sit down. If you're walking on a trail and you do the same walk every few days, Pretty soon the dog knows, okay, if it's got the leash on, you're probably going down that trail. And you're setting the dog up to just go down the trail. When I work with the pups, and even as adults, I hardly go anywhere. While I'm working and training, I want the dog to be like this right here. I want to be have the dog pay attention to what I'm doing. My goal is to get the dog to focus that I've got the leash and I want them focused on me. I'm not too worried about what's going on around them. Hey, pay attention. And you have to use some visual cues sometimes to snap the dog to attention. That Pavlov guy with his study about ringing the bell and feeding the dog every time you ring the bell, the dog gets hungry and starts to think it's ready to eat. Well, the same signal can be used, different signals can be used for different activities. And so, that's the whole premise behind having a signal for the dog. It doesn't have to be a visual cue. It can be verbal. Uh, it can be both. It can be something as simple as putting a harness on, and now it's a cue for the dog that, hey, something different is expected. Now, the key with a loose lead is you, I, I don't, no, right here, I'm not too fussy as to either side, which side the dog's on, doesn't much matter as long as it's near me, I'm usually running multiple dogs all the time, so I can have them on left or right, doesn't matter, hey, right here, stay by me, cut, sit down, good, let's just take this off real quick. You just stay by me right here. Just stay right there. Now, probably it's just as easy for me to demonstrate without the lead, but uh, the dog has got the halter on, so now it knows to stay around. Now, you got to work with the dog. Now, an area like this, if I was training a pup, I wouldn't leave the area with the leash. And I may normally start out with a long lead. I'll just get it. Stay here. Stay, go move. Stay. Now a long lead is just a longer rope. 
And so I may work with a dog on a longer lead. I just have a hook, same deal. No, nothing fancy, just a piece of nylon rope. And it works pretty fair. You can just keep the dog right around you in that circle till it's paying attention. And the dog should be focused on what you want to do, and it doesn't matter which dog, stay there. Go to come here. Right here. Come here. Come. These guys are tired. <laughs> They're tough guys. Now we'll see if he'll uh, go to his spot. Come right here. Come right here. Dakota. Right. Now Dakota, he'll never walk in front of me. He'll never cross in front of me. He'll always go around. I could do it 20 times. He'll do the same thing all the time. Now when you're working with a pup, you're just going to stay focused on your little area, get them doing what you want them to do, and basically what's going to happen, Ty, is the pup's going to be focused around what's going on, and it's going to stay focused on what you're doing. Now, don't go anywhere. Don't teach the dog that the leash is immediately walking. I don't believe you'll have the results you need. I think you got to have the dog understand that the harness, the leash, the collar, however you want to work it, means to pay attention to what you're doing and where you are and to be right in your neighborhood. It's got to be right around where you're at. And, uh, Tora, They should be focused enough to just come right out of wherever they're doing. No, they're not going to like sitting in the sun here. It's hot for them up here today, so they'll want to sit in the shade, which is fine. They don't have to stay right next door to me. They're, they're by me. Now, when you're working with a pup, the longer the lead you use, the more things you can train in the area. You can train come here. You can get these leads 50 feet long. That dog could be way up the hill. You could be working on come here from there. You just work in an area, pick a deserted spot. It doesn't have to be any bigger than this and work in it. And just get the dog to really be focused on the lead. Then shorten the lead, that sort of thing. Now, the dog should not pull on the lead. Okay. Come by me. Okay. Good. Come. Good. Come. Come by me here. Now they should know the lead's down, should stay. Always work open hand, no treats. I don't believe in packing treats up here. Enough to carry type of thing. So you wanna stay in an area. Don't get so wound up as that you have to be exercising the dog while you're training, because you don't. You can exercise the dog Focus all your energies on getting the dog to pay attention to what you're doing, that is focused on you. And that way when they're off leash, it doesn't matter what's going on around you, if you need them to come, they'll come. You go ahead. Go ahead, girl. Go ahead. And uh, you want to be able to run multiple dogs, maybe you have two. Maybe you have three, doesn't matter. They should all be paying attention. But the one that's right in front of you working with you, the one you're calling to you to work on, it's got to be able to focus. Koda, come here. Right by me. 
You better sit down, Tori. Come, boy. Now, you also got to have a little patience. Because they'll follow the commands. They'll make it to you. And you got to give them the rewards and the... So repetition is crucial. You got to do the same thing for days on end in a zone like this until the dog is focused. Once the dog is focused, it's piece of cake from then on. Now, it might happen way faster. Of course, this is three genetic lines, like three, three, uh, quote as Taurus dad and Taurus Kai's mother, however you want to say that. So, it's fairly easy for me because they all think the same. Uh, genetically connected dogs like this, especially hiking dogs like this. What is the premier hiking dog in North America? And Thor is probably second, and Kai is probably third. So as far as hiking in this terrain, there's no better dogs. Kai, right here. Come by me. Now we can travel for days in all over the Rockies and I would never even carry a leash. I would never even have halters on them. Kai, come here by me. Because I've had them focused and they understand that I want them around when we're in the bush. I, once a dog is well trained, you don't need to have the halter on for them to focus. They'll they'll pay attention with or without it. It's, a, it's irrelevant. Taurus. I put one on Dakota because I thought, well, I'll demonstrate that leash, but for the most part, mute point with these guys. But the key is to stay in, in a zone. Don't don't get focused on heading out right away. Just, just stay focused. Then, of course, go do some work. Like, take the dog for a walk. And, and these dogs you should take for walks where it's an area like this. Don't... Uh, overwhelm the dog with the same pattern of trail as soon as you take I've saw it before people go on hikes down trails and the minute they unhook that leash boom that dog is gone down the trail that's what we just taught him to do we've taught him the minute we hook on that we're going somewhere and it's down that trail and there's no rhyme or reason why we're going down there we're not working we're not scouting we're not looking for danger we're not hunting we're just heading down that trail well that's that's our fault for doing that we've conditioned that dog that that's what we do when we put the harness on when we put the leash on okay We want the dog to be able to focus in an area and stay right around and stay close. I want them to have their own separate ranging areas and distances and want to trust in how far I want them to go. And different days, different dogs go different uh, distances. But we can't have them uh, two miles away because they could be that far in a short order. So you want to be able to get, get your leash work sorted out. Okay. Come here. Okay. Sure. Okay. Come up here. So again, just to illustrate a little bit. Hey, no, oh no. Pay attention. So make sure you have a signal that uh, snaps the dog out of its uh, nope. Keep the dog focused. You might have to get him to pay attention that you're doing something with him. Pups, of course, I use, hey, hey, hey. Then they focus right away. They know what's going on by me. Air scent dogs learn catch up scents <laughs> all the time in trails like this. And so, hey, 
Come by me. You'll have to snap them out. Come here. See, she catches the scent right there. Come here. crossing trails of wild game all day long up here coming up here was I knew there was something back over here they were all freaking a little bit so she's catching that scent again these are serious hunting dogs so they pay attention stuff moves through the air especially coming up these ridges like we're on here we're up pretty high right now they had a pretty big climb to get up here come I wouldn't really be doing a whole lot more when I was training a little tiny pup on leash. I wouldn't be doing much more. If I was off leash, of course, we'd be doing stuff. We'd be cruising through the bush here. But on leash, I want them to focus on me, so I want them right here. Off leash, they're staying with me. They're going to focus and follow along. I'm going to call them back, that sort of thing. It's a give and take area when you're doing off leash. And they're hardwired to stay within sight when they're small anyway. But if you've already got a 16 or 18 or 20 week old dog and older, and you're going to take them to a place that you've walked down a fair bit with a leash and unleash them, you'll have issues. Start out putting them back on, get into this stage where you can just walk around with the dog. So yeah, the focus should be get the dog to pay right attention right here and then you'll find the same thing once you take the harness off. It's going to be the same deal. The dog now knows it's released a little bit. It'll take and do its thing. But anytime you want to bring it back into focus, it'll come right back into focus. Okay, right here. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So, the harness, I think you'll have good success using a harness. Lots of people leave the collar on the dog all the time and have tags on it and things like that. I don't, of course. So, if you're leaving a collar on the dog all the time, then the harness is going to work perfect because there's no way for you to signal the dog that it's work time if you've left the collar on. How, you, how is that going to work? I wouldn't have any results with that. Besides, I, I never lead a dog by the neck, not an air scent dog anyway. Well, I only have air scent dogs, so. Um, I'm not skilled in a whole bunch of other dogs or other breeds or anything like that. I'm a remote terrain dog handler with elk hounds. Um, I don't deal with pointers and herding dogs and all that. So my focus, you know, for three generations of dogs here is been mountain trails, you know, a decade or so of mountain trails all over and off-leash dogs, ten at a time, stuff like that. And it's always the same breed of dog. And so I want the dogs to be around me in this environment, game all over. I don't want them chasing the game. I don't want the cougars jumping on me. I don't want to get 
in a bind either. I don't want cubs on one side, the old sow on this side. I want to know that she's there so we can leave her be. We don't bother the wildlife. We just cruise through it. These guys don't get excited about it. Bear could cross over there, no big deal. They're, they're going to keep an eye on her, but it's not a panic situation. So when you're working off leash, Get the dog focused in a small area first. Stay focused till there's no pulling on that leash, till it's all focused on what you're doing. Kai, come here. Kai, right here. Let's put this back on. Come here, right here. Go ahead. You can go. Go ahead. Go ahead. Four. So again, till I release Kai, she probably just gonna hang around, even though I gave her a signal she could go. A couple more years. Um, Kai will understand that she has more range than what she thinks she does. It's quite nice now. Once the altar's on, her range is like here. Same as the other young dogs. You got to keep them on a fairly, what I would refer to as a tight leash, but no leash, but I want them close by. The older dogs, they've all got skills. They can range further. A couple key things when you're working with a long lead you can work on stop. You can work on it down stays. You can uh, distance downs. You can do all kinds of things with a long lead. Get those real light ones if you want. But don't go anywhere when you're working with the training this. Just stay focused in an area and make sure they stay around you. They'll all just learn to respond immediately. Kai. Right here. Tora, right here. Koda, right here. Good, good, good you guys. Good, 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 go ahead. Go ahead, boy. Go ahead, Tora. So hopefully that will give you a few, a few tips on working so that you can develop off-leash skills in your dog. Now, you really need to have the dog focused on that halter before you take it off, of course, but it's all in that work. Guy, right here. Now, by me. Right here. What a good girl. What a good girl. All right. 